Okay, so you're probably looking at solar. Um, let's not buy potatoes and get the right sort of system for you. So I've been working in solar for a while. I've just started a new company called Renew Solar. So I've done all the testing uh, so you don't have to. That's cost a bit of money, but we know exactly where we stand with solar. So what I want to give you is some quick advice. When you buy solar, there's going to be two types of solar. Well, there's about three or four different types of solar that you can buy. If you buy a grid tied battery, DC coupled or AC coupled, um, inverter box, something like a ESS, then what you do is you can have a lot of solar panels. And a lot of companies will try and say a lot of solar panels are going to cost you more money. But the chances of you using those are debatable. Now, in the use case scenario, if you're just using a normal standard inverter with no battery, you do not need to buy 4, 10, 8, 9 kilowatts of power. What you need to do is just go down to your smart meter or have someone come out and go, look, how much money, how much electric do I use? Or use your electric bill and calculate it down for your daily use. Now, solar panel off on grid tied solar panels will only produce power when the sun's there. Your peak power will normally come after the sun's gone down and therefore you're going to get no benefits at all from your solar installation for any nighttime use. There's no offset, the payment, feed-in, segs, whatever, is completely worthless and is not guaranteed. It looked like it was going to be guaranteed for ages and of course then they took it away. And the same thing happens these days. So you're not going to, don't bank on that. So if you want a solar installation, you could find that you could get away with, uh, for most homes, probably about a one kilowatt installation if you're just grid tied. If you've got batteries on the other hand, you're going to use those batteries at night at your peak rate to absorb more of the electrical cost and it will make a huge difference to you if you buy batteries. But if you buy batteries then you need to buy a bigger solar array because you are charging those batteries. And what I'm going to try and do is do some little charts on the, uh, on the video so you can see uh, what, sort of, what and where your actual power goes. So if you buy a battery system you need to buy a decent battery system and you're going to want one that lasts you. Now a lot of solar companies I see as trying to sell off 5 kilowatts and such and such like. That, no, no it doesn't work like that. Now if you want your batteries to last then you need to buy about 50% more power than you're actually going to use. And the reason for that is that the battery chemistry lasts a lot longer. So you're looking at wanting batteries, um, paying your uh, £1,500 or £2,500 to last you at least 16 years. And by build, building or buying a bigger battery will give you the longevity that you want in your battery cells. It's going to probably cost you at least three to £6,000 with your batteries. However, what you need to do is work out your sun, well, how much sun you're going to get, how much solar you can generate, and, and those batteries, and how much power you're going to use, and how you can replenish that power. Now, for most of you uh, who have um, EVs, you'll use your um, low rate to charge those batteries as well, because in winter time, as the sun degrades, the power from the sun degrades, you're going to get less power from your solar array. And the other way of compensating for that, in some form, is by having a larger array. But it doesn't always work like that anyway. Um, depending on your roof, it's whether it's worth doing it, um, having a larger array, and how you configure that array. So this is why you shouldn't just go out and go, well, I'm going to cover my whole roof in solar panels, um, have 600 gigawatts of power coming in because I live in a massive house and I'm going to um, have just a grid tie inverter. So what you need to do is just calculate basically. It's a bit mathematical and it's a bit variable because solar panels in the sun will make bundles of power uh, and you probably won't be able to use it. Um, and all you're doing is pumping that back out to the, uh, to, to the grid and the electric companies are selling your electric that you paid for which is the old scam of how and why solar was installed free with grants and everything else.
So I hope you take heed and will look closely through the videos that I've done um, just explaining how to install a uh, solar panel, how much power you would need, how much power you would use and, and what's the best things to do. We do a reducer. Uh, I call it the reducer because it reduces your bill. Now, there's a load of misconceptions of how solar actually works, so you have to really pay attention. So, if I have a grid tied inverter and some solar panels, that will push whatever power comes from the sun back into your home grid and then out to the grid if there's excess. So, all that power that you use during that time can be absorbed by the solar panels pushing the power on, onto your items that you is using the power at home. When you're not using that power, that power just goes off to the grid. You can get um, limiters. They're probably a good idea if you don't want uh, the big companies making money for at your expense. So what you would do is you put a limiter in and, and that sorts that problem out. But what you need to do is really size it so it's about right for your electric use. Now, in the daytime, most of you are not going to probably use over 200 watts an hour. Uh, some of you will be about 500 watts an hour. So you're talking between the difference between one and two panels. Um, and that's what you would use. But in the winter time, you could be making 100 times less power from your solar. So what you'd need to do is work out, you know, um, where's my position of my solar panels, um, whether you can adjust them as well, because that can make a difference of 35%. If you have fixed panels, they're kind of always put in the best between both worlds, best of none. So if you have two arrays, um, which I've done, um, I can get full power from one array, um, for the winter time and full power on the other one during summer time and in the intermediate as the sun changes because obviously the sun's up higher in the summer time so your panels can be near enough um, flat um, but they're near enough standing up in the winter time because the sun's all the way down here so there's like a difference of you know almost 45 degrees there if you're fixed here then you know there is going to be that point in the year where you're going to make more power um, based on the angle of your roof, if you're roof installing. Um, but in the winter time, you're not going to make the best power um, at all on those uh, panels. And obviously, in the height of summer, you won't make the most out of your panels. So you have to be a little bit more careful um, on how you set your rays up. So the panel size. Now, I use um, one kilowatt. And... In the winter time, it makes about 36 watts. 36 watts to 136 watts. Um, obviously, that's not really going to cut it for most people. So, this is kind of like a real average um, for winter time production with solar. So, if you're looking at about 36 watts, you'd want to go, you know, up to about the three to 300 watts. Although I did say it does make 136 watts. So, we need to have at least a three. Three to four kilowatt solar system is ideal for most homes, and most homes will fit that. That's around um, eight, eight to ten panels. But with newer panels with the higher wattage, you can get away with using less panels. Although the how it actually works makes a difference because it's your square meter surface coverage. So bigger panels, uh, better production in winter from them um, and in the summer uh, you know they will obviously outperform so you have to balance then between what your solar panel is and your inverter so if you've got batteries of course you would need to add on some more for that but if you're charging at five pence or 4.12 pence or whatever rates that you're being offered for cheap rate then you may find that that may be a better option than trying to struggle with oversizing your solar panels um, especially when you have uh, niche places where you can put them. Uh, listed buildings might want them on the eight buildings which are very small and you can't get enough solar on them. You don't need to worry about that if you don't mind paying the five pence a kilowatt um, for the power from the grid. And for many years now I've tried to make um, solar affordable but with solar the cost of energy has been so low that it takes 
20 years for break even which is absolutely stupid you need to have a better solution um, and a much faster solution so our reducer for example uh, you can pay that off and it can pay for itself in less than one year so a return on investment in one year is a lot better than um, 10 years time uh, and then obviously things will start to break so you end up with more cost and it comes a vicious circle so just don't buy more panels than you actually need buy the right size inverter and my suggestion is to buy batteries even if you're just buying one kilowatt it will smooth out the power during the day for when clouds come over if you're using a very small array so don't get caught out with people trying to oversell you products um, it does cost you more money um, even though solar panels are cheap you still have to have them fitted um, and you know you're still paying you know, a couple of hundred maybe a thousand pounds extra on top um, so that's up to you that's your decision there um, but you don't actually need it I would stick more to um, defining where you sit with your solar requirements do you have an EV that needs charging will you have a battery bank uh, do you want to use off-peak? Do you mind in winter buying cheap electric and storing it in your batteries for use at peak rate times? These will all save you money um, and it is, that's your consideration that you really need to make whilst picking solar. There's no point in just plastering your house with uh, solar panels having no battery. Uh, you will make no difference. There's no point at all in having a system like that. You're just throwing money away. So you've been told, um, visit my site, renewsolar.co.uk, uh, click on our blog which I keep up to date because our website is still a holding page, so you can't really go on there and do much at the moment until i finished dealing with that. But uh, you can find us on Facebook, um, which is R Solar UK, um, and I keep up to date on the deals and everything that we're doing um, so that you can save money on your solar. Um, we're based in Hampshire and we cover the area uh, we will go out and we do do DIY kits as well so they may come in handy for people if you're in a listed building and can't get solar uh, we've got ideas and we're talking with uh, local authorities um, and building regulations regarding uh, the installation and courtesy installation of solar so hopefully we'll get a fixed plan through government I'm talking talks with government as we speak um, to, to get those problems resolved so that more people can save money on their electric bills and not have to worry too much about having um, the 54% rise in rates kilowatt rates and the uh, doubling of the standing charge which is going to affect a lot of people if you enjoyed this video and you want to subscribe, you can subscribe to my channel. But best of all, go on the Off Grid or Solar and Off Grid uh, playlist and subscribe to that. You'll find uh, more interesting videos and more on topic for you on those. So uh, do click like if you like the video. Thank you very much. Bye.